Okay, so starting the video up here. And raise four two of clubs. Uh, I think I'm just going to probably triple barrel off here. Uh, I have no real equity. Or I have no real uh, showdown value whatsoever, obviously. And it, it 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 sucks because like I'm almost always getting called on this river. But I still need a bluffing range here. And that's definitely something that people are getting more and more cognizant of. Is even when you're called, you still have to make that bluff against a good player. Uh, because they're just going to, if you don't, you just you just have to. Like There are hands he's going to be folding, considering how strong a triple barrel looks for me on that exact river uh like ace eight he's calling with but it's not because he's like super excited to call with ace eight compared to some other hands uh like if he i think i could get a fold out of obviously like queen jack or something on that river uh, a decent amount of the time but uh barreling off just uh with the bottom of your absolute value of your range and with the most amount of equity for that hand just makes a lot of intuitive sense to me. So I went for it. And he obviously called. And he had ace eight, so congrats to him. Um, we uh, check back here. Uh, the 7-4. I think that's fine. Not a board I expect to get a ton of um, credit for on seat betting. Like, if I think if... I can take it down with the seabed. I can take it out later in the hand quite a bit often. Um, I check back a six here. Uh, I don't like that. I think I should be seabedding it. Uh, for one, when an ace comes, he's not going to uh, give me credit if I seabed it too, too much. Uh, and this is kind of the fun part of being, and I call the river obviously when I improve. This is the fun part of be, being against someone who's uh aggressive and all the all the things like you just bet your strong hands especially heads up like there's no need to like you're going to be ex expected to be bluffing so much and i just got caught bluffing etc uh, i went for a check raise on the right i think it's yeah i think i like that actually i hadn't really shown him too many turn check raises yet and i'd also been three betting quite a bit uh perception wise and he called me down with king jack there obviously on the river uh it's an easy call for him turns a bit uh something we got to make a note of uh calling with king king jack there not a bad play by any means but just something we got to take note of and just go for uh a check turn check raise then a pretty big bet on the river i think it's a spot where he's going to expect me to be bluffing if i don't have uh, exactly what I was representing on the turn. Like, am I betting, like, I'm basically only representing now Queen 10 or some random, like, 9 10 that I decided to turn into a bluff on the turn when I was check raising. Uh, so, which definitely could be in my range. Uh, the Queen, obviously, on the river is a little unfortunate because it counterfeits a lot of situations. But this is where I'm going to apparently start running really well. So, turn the gut shot on the top, right? Uh, definitely just a good, gonna keep barreling. Definitely a good card to barrel on. And three betting there in the top right. And just gonna keep betting through here. On the, uh, top left. With top boat. Uh, I expect to get called by like ace high. And then also like anytime he has a five, he's gonna check raise that turn. And then I can also just represent a ton of, uh, backdoor things. Uh, I think on this river, I go for an overbet. Which I think is okay. Uh, I don't think I think if he was going to check raise uh, as a bluff, I think he's doing it before the river. So I think with my overbet, it definitely polarizes me. But I'm not sure how light he's going to call me down there, considering I block all the kings basically. So it's not like when he has a king, he's going to like be thinking about getting getting a cut or whatnot.